All right, so what's up, everybody? Uh, I haven't done a setup video in ages, uh, but decided it was time to do an updated setup for the Charlotte uh, Truck Series, and this is a custom setup. Uh, somebody left me feedback saying that the tires wore out and you couldn't get through a full fuel run with the setup I had. I went and tested it, and they were right. It was good feedback. The best I could do is get to about three laps of fuel left, and, and I was blowing tires. So I went back to the drawing board, and when I say three laps of fuel, that is on a two times fuel run. Um, went back to the drawing board, came up with a setup <coughs> that I have made it through a fuel run here, so I think that is better. <coughs> and I have ran a 30.242 with it, as you can see. Uh, that bottom number there that's the record, that was probably, I'm saying, draft aided. I don't know exactly when I set that. But this one, I have made it through a few runs, so it's just a hair quicker, and it lasts a little bit longer, and it seemed like <coughs> it didn't just last longer. I, I did some comparisons of lap times on a spreadsheet with the old setup and the new setup, and the new setup was absolutely quicker pretty much all the way through the run. So let's see if I can get on my game here and get a 30.2 on video for you guys. Sounds like I have got a YouTube video playing in the background. I may have to do something about that. There's a 30.2. So let me slow down. I don't know if you can hear it in my ear. I'm hearing a YouTube video that sounds like it must be playing in the background from my, uh, yeah, playing in the background <laughs> from a different tab that's open. But <clears throat> anyway, there is a 30.2. It was barely a 30.2, but I got a 30.294. Let me do the thing where I show you how I get around this place, and then we will go from there. I'm going to go around and start with how I get around it, starting in turn one and two. So bear with me till I get there. And I'll show you how to get around the place. Then we will obviously go to the garage, show the setup, and talk about it. I will tell you, if you've looked at the old setup, this one is drastically different. That old setup was done, I don't know exactly when, probably over a year ago. And I like to think I've gotten better and learned since then. The setups now are not always actually quicker as far as a single lap time. But they do seem to last better on the long run. But here we go, coming into one. I am kind of up high, I'm kind of starting my arc into the corner, about here, probably just before you get to where you see the uh, blue and white stripes on the wall there is where I'm going to lift. So I'm going to lift probably just a hair before that, maybe it's closer to when it actually starts, you can rewind the video and see when I lifted. But right in there, I'm going to let the truck settle to the bottom. The closer I can get to that, that blue line without actually touching the apron, the faster my lap's going to be. As soon as I get it settled, I am hammered down on the gas. Uh, not easy at all. I just mash it down, and then I work my way to the outside. I'm a little bit above the suggested line on exit. It seems like if you let the truck drift to the outside a little bit, you get a little bit more speed in the straightaway. And then as we come into turn three, I'm going to try to let... Stuart Friesen go by me. As I'm coming in, I'm taking kind of more or less the suggest line, maybe a little bit wider. And again, right about where you see this, uh, the painting on the wall start. We see those first blue stripes, maybe a little bit before that. I lift and try to get the thing to the bottom and then to kind of run the bottom around the corner here. When you are exiting, the big thing is the truck getting loose when you want to exit. That's the problem you fight at Charlotte. It's actually the problem you fight at most tracks. But the key is, I didn't have problems with it all the way through a fuel run. But the idea is you got to have the truck straight on exit. If you are here and you are still turning the wheel really hard left, you're in trouble. By the time you get to here, you need to have the truck rotated and have it going forward. And then I let it arc a little bit wider than the suggested groove and I am looking at this Bank of America sign right here and as soon as I get to that that is where I start pulling it off the wall and getting it down towards the bottom and then as we go through the uh, double dog leg here I'm getting down close to the bottom through the dog leg part of it but that is a lap at Charlotte it is a 30.2 I have ran um, I have ran through a full fuel run 
which that was a, a great feedback and, and a valid criticism of the old setup that yeah about three laps of fuel on two times wear was all I could get and then I had to then I had to uh, I was basically blowing a tire but let's get to the setup and talk about the setup uh, I have noticed that the newer setups I've made are significantly looser. So if this setup is a little bit too loose for you, I would tell you to go over here and go up one click on that front sway bar. That'll make a big difference, especially on corner exit. Um, but as far as the setup, there's nothing real radical on the bumps and rebounds. The front weight and wedge is, is way higher than the setup I did a year ago. But usually you have to have those a little bit higher if your sway bar is a little bit lower. So I had to run these quite a bit higher than the original setup I had, which like I said was over a year ago because the original setup had a sway bar of 1.775. Um, I usually run the springs maxed out, but it seems like going down just a little bit on those right side springs helps keep it from getting loose. And I say a little bit, just, just like 20 pounds or so. Um, these the tires being way up on the tires really helps your straightaway speed so that's why I'm up way more than the default settings um, I am running maxed out track bars that again just seems to help with overall speed uh, the higher you go on those track bars the looser you are but but I run them maxed out on just about all of my newer setups I used to run really high grill tape and I don't anymore and the reason I don't is that really high grill tape made the car tighter and it also made it a big handful when you were right behind somebody in the draft because it seemed like a lot of of your handling came from having the the the, the nose with all that tape on it was really pushed down with with the wind you were getting off of it and when you got right behind somebody there wasn't any wind and it seemed like taking the air off the nose made it really loose so i started running much lower grill tape especially on the trucks the other thing i did was reduce the wheel lock and wheel lock is when you turn the wheel all the way to the left or all the way to the right that's how far of an angle those wheels are turning so a wheel lock of three means you can turn that wheel all the way to the left and the wheels aren't turned at such a severe angle as if you were at a 10 or a 12. What it means is you have to put more wheel input when you're driving, but it does seem like it helps with a loose condition. Okay, um, It helps keep the truck from getting loose because the, the wheels just aren't turning at such a severe angle. And last, I think I ran a 325 gear, and I think this is a 3.30 or 330, so I put a little more gear into it. Uh, if you get better lap times or you can roll the corner a little better than I do, you might run a 325 and get better lap times out of it, but this is what worked for me. So with all that being said, I um, hope this works for you. Give me some feedback on it. Tell me what you think. And um, like I said, hope you guys win lots of races and turn lots of fast laps with this. And hope you all have a great day.